everyone, this is Raina Correa with Purpose and Passion. I'm so excited today because I have a special person in the building that is my family, and I'm so inspired by her in so many ways. But I do want to share this story because I'm introducing this amazing woman. She's a CEO, New Jersey Teamsters, a football club. And when you think about sports, you think about men. And this woman is in a male dominant industry, but she is the perfect woman to be in that industry because she is amazing in so many levels. And I want to introduce Sabrina Stowe Geraldino. And I'm so excited to have you, Prima. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Prima. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm so excited. Well, I want you to take our viewers uh, through like kind of like autobiography a little bit, especially like where your parents are from, where you were born and raised. Sure. So I'm originally born and raised in Philadelphia. I'm from an area called Winfield, and that is a section in Philadelphia County, but uh, from the neighborhood of Will Smith. Um, let me see, uh, just lots of great people from my neighborhood. So I'm very proud to be from West Philly. My mother and my mother is the, was the firstborn Philadelphian. Her family is from uh, Swainsboro, Georgia. And my father is from a Melungeon Cuban family. So Iberian, uh, South Carolina. And so I'm considered Creole or Melungeon. And yeah, so that's uh, my track record. I'm also partially raised in New York, close to Mount Vernon in the Bronx. So I've been able to uh, be raised in suburban Philadelphia. And then every summer, Easter break, winter break, Christmas break, I spent that time in the Bronx um, and you know, just around hip hop uh, legacy. So yeah. Wow, you're my first New York, <laughs> the East Coast lady. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. You know, I feel like, you know, you always get like those uh, first time, you know, guests and and it's memorable. You know what I mean? It's memorable. So I just yeah. think like, wow. So, um, you know, how was your childhood? So um, I actually consider my childhood privilege. I'm an only child of my mother and Alan Stowe, um, my stepdad who raised me, adopted me. He's like, my father. Um, they called him Tainsy. So I was raised with the best. You know, I had a, a car at 16. I was given a home at 18. Uh, I was well educated, ballet, tap, jazz, piano. I played the wow. flute. I was in the band. Um, and then my family are a political family. Dr. Martin Luther King is my second cousin, my mother's first cousin, first removed by way of her father. So there's always been a social and community activist side of me growing up as well. So I think that's the best of both worlds, living in the suburbs, you know, intermingling with all types of kids. Like I lived in a neighborhood where Netanyahu grew up, Bill Cosby raised his kids in Elkins Park. Like that's where I was raised. Wow. Um, and then I was able to go to the hood in the city because I volunteered as a press secretary for a, a at the time, a U.S. Congress, a senator that turned into a U.S. congressman. I'm sorry, a state senator that turned into, uh, that became a congressman. So I was able to finagle both worlds. And so, yeah. So Dang, that's so inspiring. Like <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> inspiring, man. Well, you know what the beautiful thing is, is that sometimes like, people can always uh, assume that people of color never came from a privileged background, right? So right. it's beautiful just to just have you to share that because privilege doesn't mean necessarily European. You know what I mean? It right. can mean for anybody. It can mean for anybody. And so I'm just loving your story because it's inspiring. And so when we would, when we would talk, 
I would like you to also talk about like, you know, your high school days and the transition before the music industry. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know, like, how did that come about? Like you, right in high school, what were you planning to do? What was your dream job? And then when you crossed over and graduated, did you go to college? Did you go to a trade school or you became an entrepreneur to be in that industry? So interestingly, um, I've known since five years old, I could remember knowing that I wanted to be in news. I believe, I, I remember in second grade or third grade, we had um, a career day. And so I put it, I wanted to be a newscaster and they had a new a sportscaster there. And he was so disappointed because I wasn't a boy, I think, and I wasn't a sports minded person. Mm -hmm. So, but I knew I wanted to be in media. I didn't know what the name would be, but I knew that was the world I wanted to be in. Um, in terms of high school, I didn't have a good track record. Like I was a lazy student. I always got by. I never needed to study. I, in, in, uh, I went to a school district in North Penn School District outside of Philly. And in middle, so, so it was elementary school, middle school, mm -hmm. junior high school, and then high school. So seventh and eighth grade, or was, no, I'm sorry, eighth and ninth grade, I screwed around. Like ninth grade, I failed English. Wow. So I had to go to summer school and I passed summer school, but you, I still had to repeat that year. Yes. So when I had gotten to 10th grade, like all of my friends left, went to high school, I was left behind. I got to 10th grade. And I took, I was in a uh, program where I was fast track. Mm -hmm. So even though I was in 10th grade, I was taking 11th grade courses as well so that I could join my class of 87. So I did that, but I ended up like, you know, as an only child, you get tested. Like people <laughs> really want to mess with you and see what you're about. And like, I was a girl that my mom was like, you're going to fight the toughest one and nobody else is going to give you a problem or don't even come home. Yes, you're not I remember home. those days. <laughs> yeah. So, so a girl, well, a friend of mine stole my gets to the situation, but my daughter's father time I was dating and I didn't want my mother to know sneaking around. And she ended up not giving me the ticket, even though she went. And then she snitched on me to my mom. So I had to like beat her up every time. Excuse the New York uh, traffic. <laughs> it's okay. It's unavoidable. Um, so I ended up getting into a fight and getting kicked out of high school during my senior year. Um, I ended up taking a GED at that high school and passing. But I also took an EMT course at Hahnemann University to study for paramedics. Like my mother was a nurse and she was like, journalists don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And so I did something to just keep her quiet. But my passion was always media. So I ended up, um, my mom, I moved to Jacksonville, Florida after high school, alleged high school, you know, GED <laughs> high school. Yes. Uh, and um, my mom, I got a call. My mom was had cancer. So I had oh, to go wow. back from Jacksonville, Florida to, to Philadelphia. And my mother lived for six months and passed away. And I ended up going to, back to community college in my, in my county, Montgomery County Community College, studying for communications. But I had, I was in high school and my high school program had broadcast. So I had learned everything about broadcasting mm -hmm. in high school that I got kicked out of because I wanted to fight every, every day that this girl didn't have my money or my ticket, just being <laughs> stubborn. So needless to say, I turned my life around because like I had to realize that, you know, some things are just not worth it. Yes. I lost a couple of months of my high school time you know not walking down an aisle and giving my mother that you know because I decided to be a tough girl yes. whatever yeah so you wow. always pay for for your for whatever you do in life wow I would have never expected that you know what I mean <laughs> I'm about like privileged to you know a, a little wild one <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. So then, so how did you, um, 
you know, how did you get into the industry? Uh, well, I always had my foot into theater. Um, I was a student at Philadelphia, Philadelphia Dance Company and Freedom Theater, which is like Freedom Theater was equivalent to like Harlem Theater where professional plays are done as well as an amateur program or developmental program. So I've always felt like I could do it. And there was nothing else that I knew that I, besides media, that like spoke to my soul. So fortunately, I, I met people throughout my life that could help me in terms of my mother putting me in a situation, paying mm -hmm. for ballet class, whatever that was, whatever I wanted to do theater. And, but my introductions and my relationship, I maintained. And um, I was in politics working and I had an opportunity to sit on the board of the Barrymore Awards, the Philadelphia Theater Award. I was the youngest board member on that theater awards, the first wow. annual. And then when I met, I, I ended up leaving Philly and moving into New York right uh, at a pivotal time after my mom passed and after a semester of college and me just saying, hey, because I've lived in New York before, I know the territory, I know hip hop people because of growing up in the Bronx, the my neighbor who's like a play cousin to me, their in-law, their, you know, in-law was the major producer for Sugar Hill Gang and blah, blah, blah. So it was yes. like, and I also interned at Power 99 in Philly as a, a press secretary, but that was like the urban radio station, the largest in Philly. So I had these connections. And when I decided to move to New York, my daughter was around five or six, seven. And I got a job, but like, I knew that I would just get into it somehow. And I ended up becoming an independent contractor for an advertising firm. This Italian owner believed in me. And I was like, I have all these contacts from working at Power 99. Maybe I could do their advertising. Yes. Maybe they need a full page ad in a source magazine. So I go and I bribed, I would pay secretaries to, to allow me to get appointments with the head of record labels. That is a, hey, but you know and what? That's, 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 that that's, that's yeah, you got to do what you got to do. And that yeah. is like, especially back in those days, I'm telling you, people don't understand that male dominant industries are hard for women. So for you to be able to just get in there the way you need to get in there and make it happen, in, that's like wow you know it takes a lot of guts to do that and it's very inspiring at the same time thank you so um the secretaries would eventually book these appointments and one guy i'll never forget at uh kadar entertainment his roster was chico debarge erica badu nobody knew these artists at the time a plus the youngest rapper and he said you know Sabrina, I don't need an advertising exec. Do you think you could get me media buys? And I said, yeah, I could do media buys. Girl, I had no clue what a media buy was. So I left the meeting and I go back to like my mentor, but the guy who's paying me as an independent contractor, Sal Franco. And I said, oh my God, they don't need a full page ad in the source. They need a media buyers. He goes, okay, I could help you. So he helped me establish credit. Like I mm. had to front. BET, MTV, money to buy 30 and 60 second commercial spots to say that an album was coming soon or in stores now, if you remember yes. those ads. I was the middleman that negotiated and booked the spots and decided what TV program I would place that commercial on to advertise Erica Badu, Chico DeBarge, A+, and then eventually it turned into, you know, Universal Records, um, Black Music, uh, Sony, Epic, I, I just did it all during the 90s. I ended up opening a business called Stowe Communications in 96 and then changing the name later to La Chic Media, La, La Chic La Revista para Mujeres because I had a Latin publication that went out throughout. I mean, it was a great store in the Latin community. So, yeah. Wow, I love it. I mean, this is not... Like this is an exciting interview because it's like you're <laughs> you're open book and it's so much knowledge, you know. And so um, being in the industry, you know, um, how was, you know, when you became a mom, like did everything change for you? Well, uh, definitely everything changed. But like 
I, my mother left me a, an estate and I was able to like sell my property, start my business, buy a home, you know, have a nanny. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like figuring out my, my, my hours, the industry was like a 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. Like you're guaranteed to have to work those hours. And then if you have to go into the studio and stop by or whatever, network, that's like until 10, 11 o'clock. So I would say that like my lifestyle was a lot different than how I was raised. Yes. But my mother prepared me for this because she always wanted to be in Hollywood or be in theater and acting. So I had a bohemian type of mom mm -hmm. that allowed me to, and my daughter kind of accepts my bohemian style. I'm still conservative. I'm still a mom. I'm still strict. Like I got to know who you're hanging with, who yes. are, mm -hmm. where you're going. I'm dropping you off. I'm picking you up. Like you're doing chores. The housekeeper might sneak and do everything else, but like, no, I want to see you mop. I want to see you do dishes and see you cook. So, um, that's just how I just kind of kept old school values of my mother. I remember she would say things like a closed mouth, don't get fed. Yes. So that's how I identify with, you know, getting up and doing what I got to do, asking for what I want, or like, um, be careful what you wish for, like making sure that I know that I want to work with whomever that I'm working with, because be careful what, who you, you know, what you wish for just all of her jewels that she gave me that's how I live it's not perfect but it's it works for me that's right I like that it works for me that's right and so let's talk about when you met your husband and um and and that relationship going into as well of the uh C, you know being the CEO of New Jersey Teamsters like you being the power couple together making this happen because that's truly inspiring as well Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was like very interesting. Um, I met my husband maybe nine years ago. Uh, a Dominican girlfriend of mine had a charity and I was helping her translate her documents to English and pitch other like the police departments for grants and dollars. And uh, Alex was helping her do something else. He sat on her board. So I didn't know that I had a thyroid disease. So mm -hmm. I would drive, like my daughter went off to college. I sold my house in Long Island, moved into Manhattan. My car got broken into, my items got stolen. I was like over Manhattan. I said, you know what? I got property in PA 90, uh, 90 minutes from Manhattan. I could just drive back and forth and just not pay anything because it was a transitional time in my career where I was going from media buys to now the internet took over and like I'm making 15% of someone's $500 budget. Absolutely not. When I would go from a $800,000 budget and I would make the 15% to an $800 budget, it's not mm -hmm. worth it. So I had to make a few changes and, and conserve my money and pay for my kids education. Uh, and she said to me, like, you're, so, I'm spending money staying in the London hotel because I'm just too tired to drive back. I would have to pull over. And I didn't know that was a part of thyroid disease that you're just tired and you can't do anything but sleep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she said, I know this guy and you just need to meet him. He's a gentleman. I think he's like married, going through a divorce. He's Dominican American. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want to meet any Dominican. <laughs> I had a Dominican husband prior. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so I said, have him call me. This is a Friday. I said, have him call me on Sunday. But he calls me on Friday but after she hangs up. And I'm very rude. Like, I told her to tell you to call me Sunday. So uh, I met him that way because I ended up staying at his house, his condo he had just bought. And he was such a gentleman. I just, we were friends for like six months from like, I met him in May. And then by September, we started dating, but we were friends in between, nothing romantic mm -hmm. at all. But he was just such a gentleman. And I was like, oh, he's kind of nerdy. You know, I'm used to the hip hop guys. Yeah. And I was like, he's always sharp, dressed and smell nice and I'm like yeah I like this guy so uh, that's how we met and um, he's a former cornerback in the NFL Europe and NFL arena 
and football. So he became an agent. Like, I wonder what it takes to be an agent. So I would do all that information and I hooked him up to get that. Uh, he wanted to be a boxing judge. Oh, what does it take to be a boxing judge? I called the commissioner, get him his information to become a boxing official. And so haphazardly, he goes with his soccer license and he goes to a draft in LA and he comes back saying, oh yeah, I'm going to buy a soccer team. So we started off in 2017 as a semi-pro team with like just a name, just an idea, knowing nothing about soccer, never playing <laughs> soccer, except during that physical education time for me, maybe a two week program in gym. For him, he's from Manhattan, Harlem. There's no football any kind program he went to school so uh it was just a passion to get young first generation and second generation americans from south america central america mm -hmm. and spain africa giving them an opportunity to reach their professional level in some capacity and then we became pro after being vetted and being nominated into a pro system with NISA. So we have provisional uh, sanction as a pro team. So we'll hope to play our first pro, pro match in 2023. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. Oh my God. That is so Thank inspiring. Sabrina, Sabrina. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, we, we have a development squad. And we've been playing for years. So we've been reaching, making, becoming champions in the soccer arena. Uh, we have an excellent coach and an excellent program. And Alex is a GM. So I'm just the marketing guru. Like I treat soccer like I would a hip hop album or mm -hmm. a pop album. And I do the marketing that way. We've been on, we are, uh, you could stream us on a discovery show called I Quit, um, which is a TV show that shows me leaving hip hop and moving into soccer. But now that I'm back in hip hop, it's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So how was COVID for you as an entrepreneur? Well, COVID was an interesting time. I think because as a pro team, we had professional sanctioning, we were able to still practice and hold trials and still make money in the soccer business. Um, but uh, in terms of like not having an audience and not relying on an audience, that was a learning curve that we overcame. Uh, so it was, it was good in the sense that you learn how to pivot Yes. And figure it out. Like you have to know how to pivot. You have to know when to pivot. You can't stay stuck in a strategy that's no longer servicing you, your business or your brand. So that's what we did. And, and doing the TV show, we actually filmed, you know, during right when the pandemic was happening and we were, we had a camera in our home 24 hours a day. So we were still working and, um, working closer together like every day with each other <laughs> on top of one another practically driving one another crazy and I was very bossy and just I know I drove him crazy but <laughs> yeah it worked oh my gosh you guys are the yin to the yang together when Absolutely. I see you guys together it's beautiful though it's beautiful it's beautiful and Thanks. so um you know this is purpose and passion and I always ask my guests um do you know your purpose? And if you do, what is your purpose on this earth? I like this question. Yes, Rena. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. There is a purpose and a passion for everything. Um, my purpose and passion, I call myself a truth seeker. Mm. I am studying to be an archivist, knowing history and Knowing the truth about everything is important to me. I'm a, I'm a fact checker for Drew Barrymore magazine and just making sure that whatever you say is correct. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to hear. And that's what I like to get back to. So whatever it is that I am doing, I am doing it because I want you to understand everything that it's about. Wow. That is like my only goal in life. If I'm being an archivist, I'm going to preserve people of influence, preserve their documents and true records. That is important to me. 
History is important to me. Being on the right side of history and knowing the truth is important because we have a lot of fake news and we have a lot of people that are reading things that, you know, that are sensationalizing things that shouldn't be. And it's like, I don't want to contribute to that as a, a media strategist and journalist. Yes. And then the other thing is to, like education, knowing that you can have all kinds of obstacles and challenges because that's life. That's what you will have. You may think that someone's life looks so great, but you don't know what their true story is and what their challenges were. Overcoming those challenges, whatever that is, I think that, you know, that's a part of seek, looking for true looking for into yourself and knowing your true self and knowing like this, you've got to do X, Y, Z to get out of it. Are you going to do it with integrity? Are you going to do it by hook or crook? Like you have options Mm -hmm. and you get to choose your destiny and your options. And so that's probably all I'm here to show people. (laughs) <laughs> that's beautiful. Cause that's enlightening. You know, it's, it's, it's when you think about the word enlight, enlightenment. So when you say en- enlightenment, it's kind of like, wow, you're enlightening people. Right. Um, and a whole nother level, because even when I'm around you, it's just like, is this spiritual feeling that I get is just like, is magical, you know, just, it's just magical. You have this vibe about you. That's just magical, you know, and so My I can see you for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> as bossy as a know-it-all but honestly that's just the spirit speaking through me I'm just really a vessel and so when I say things I don't mean any harm I'm just brutally honest yes 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 called the the new color of success and that's what she was like Sabrina is brutally honest (laughs) and it just comes across that way but it's not in my intent it's just yeah your intentions are in good a good intention And I think about Jesus and I'm like, Jesus wasn't soft to people. Like he spoke straight up, like, yes, Muhammad, all these prophets, they spoke, they just spoke it into what it is and you felt it. Right. So there there is no harm in it. It is what it is. (laughs) (laughs) And then, um, talking about, uh, we already caught, you know, we talked about the, uh, purpose and so your passion what is your passion Sabrina all things media and entertainment bringing new ideas and the futuristic ideas to the world like I just want to explode with uh new everything like I'm thinking futuristic I want to be the future of everything that you guys see. I want to have my fingerprint in terms of the metaverse um, and just being ahead of the curve. I don't, I think my passion is like entertainment. So it's just moving into the digital sphere. That's Mm -hmm. why I sound a little different because I am in a different element of entertainment now and I'm learning to embrace it and be open to learning about technology. So this is my passion and I'm in love with it. Like 4D metaverse, like, you know, it's exciting. I'm excited. You excited. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. And so since you're talking about media, what advice would you give women out there that have a passion about media, but they just don't know where to start? Well, I guess I would say that you would have to really think about what area in media that it is that you love, Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's on the strategy end, whether it's doing the PR work, Um, but whatever it is, or even if there is a company that you can envision yourself working at, reach out to them and someone to mentor you and to put you in position to show them what your worth is so that they can then move you into the area in which they think they can help you or just do it. Like start with the YouTube platform, start with the podcast, like have a, uh, a, a title, have a, a, a passion or purpose, like have a reason behind what you're doing and people will follow if it's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's always a, there's always an area for anyone in media to go into, but just 
go in with some type of uh, integrity and, and if not boundaries, mm-hmm. you know, set boundaries for yourself and know how far you'll go in order to get to where you want to go, because really your name is all you have. And if you want to do something and you're thinking about your legacy, then you will walk the walk and do, it'll take the long route because you are doing things with integrity. But if you want a quick run and you want to get to, you know, hurry up and get there, then you can do all kinds of things to get there. It's up to you. All right. And um, last but not least, um, is there any other businesses you own that you want to share with the viewers? Oh, that's nice. No one ever asked me these things. Well, I am a business developer for 4D Fun, uh, a um, a metaverse, a studio that uh, produces concerts, videos, and and, um, songs for your metaverse and NFT purposes. Mm. And um, I'm also partners with Robert Scott. Um, He is Boston Rob. He's Onyx's tour manager, but he and I, uh, we manage, so we administer music publishing together and we're doing some projects together. And I manage uh, a filmmaker named Terrence T, Terrence Takim, who is doing a George Floyd uh, film, uh, who, um, when they killed, when they murdered, when they uh, murdered George, I got to get the film right. Uh, (laughs) But, so I'm doing a lot. I'm just keeping my hands in music publishing, film, and the metaverse now. And I'm still CEO of New Jersey Teamsters Football Club. And we own a little piece of um, Irish CFC, uh, which we're buying into a first division Irish club abroad in Ireland. So uh, we're doing a few things, you know, um, and I'm hoping to do more things in Hollywood. So I'm looking for a spot now. I'm claiming my place to That's Newport right. Post. And uh, so I'll have some clients in that area. Wow, that is so inspiring. Just thinking about like your life and where you're at now. You know, it's, it's truly, truly a blessing. And um, as I end the show, is there anything that you would like to share, like an encouraging word, uh, words for my viewers? Sure. Uh, well, I'd like to share with you that whatever it is that you do, think about what will make you happy, what Mm. will make you get up and do it, regardless of whether you're getting a check or not. Uh, that's what I think it is that the person should do with their life. You know, you may have circumstances where you're a young mom (laughs) or a parent, bless you. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, so you may have to work to fulfill other dreams and to put food on the table, but just do it. Just seek out somewhere, volunteer your time and, and someone will pay you for it because you're doing a great job and believe in yourself. That's the most important. Believe that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Sabrina, just for, you know, gracing my show and being able to enlighten, you know, speak your truth and inspire our viewers, including me, of course, you know, I'm always inspired. Like I just, you know, you're, like you say that you're with some, you like some people might not like you, but I love you. Oh, I, <laughs> I love, love you. you. You know, you know, it's just, it's you're who you are. And when somebody knows who you are, then they respect that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you love yes. people unconditional because you know, they have a big heart. They mean good. And they always want to see people win. And that's one thing yeah. about you. I I always get that positive energy about you. You know, every time I see you, especially when you invited me to the event that I've never been to, that was so like, wow, these are all the NFL guys up in here. You know what I mean? Like normally I would never be in an atmosphere that, you know, like that, but because of you talk a little bit about that, you know, about that event. 
Sure. So um, the state of New Jersey, I applied for the first grant that I've ever gotten for New Jersey Teamsters Football Club. So New Jersey State Visit New Jersey gave us a grant to market our club and to bring tourism into the stadium. And my husband is a Lee Steinberg alumni at his academy, sports academy. And we decided to pay it forward because Lee donates to a nonprofit, the Lantern Network, which gives back to inner city and men boys of color um, youth organization. So we, we sponsored it. Um, it was great. We launched our first NFT and Lee Steinberg, who is the first super agent. And the reason yes. why you watch the music movie, Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Well, the film was based on Lee's life and um, he has Patrick Mahomes and a lot of other players. The first draft picks are his specialty. So um, we're just fortunate to align ourselves with organizations like Lee Steinberg's uh, uh, Lee Steinberg Sports a, a Sports Agency and Academy. I'm all yeah. tongue titled. It's okay. But that's what that was, and to invite you, you know, you're so positive. You're you're out here in the community, day in day yes. out. You deserve as if I could invite you to whatever I could invite you to, because I know that you're sincere in your neighborhood and outside of your neighborhood. People don't know your reach, but just knowing you being a mom, doing what you have to do as a mom and a wife and a politician and a candidate, a mayoral candidate, soon to be mayor of Inglewood. So I'm Yes, ma'am. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Well, I tell you you this, when God blessed me with that seat, he already kind of, you know, spoke with me spiritually with, you know, you need disciples. And so you're, you and your husband is going to be a part of that discipleship when I get into office, because obviously, you know, I'm learning about NFT. Like I went to an event. And I'm still like kind of lost in it, right, but it right. sounds exciting because just like you said, when it comes to uh, media and internet, it's a, it's a new, it's a new light and it's going yeah. to another level than what it is right now. You know what I mean? When you think about AOL back in the days, you see the little person running on your, on your, not a laptop, but on your freaking, what's that called? That computer. computer. <laughs> yes. And was, yes, honey. Yes. And it would just, be running you're waiting for you know for it to just come on and look at where we are now we're on our cell phones ipads laptops like this and so when you were talking about that like man like i'm i'm learning this next step in the you know the internet world like wow like you know you're always you know a step ahead of the game and that's important that's important. So I think about like, you know, you know, running for office and the people that God has blessed me in my life and to utilize them when I get into office, because, you know, at the end of the day, the SoFi stadium is there, the Clippers are coming. And so I want to be able to utilize you and your husband's, you know, expertise and bringing something to the table. Because one thing you said is, the guy that played the, you know, the, that was about Jerry Maguire, he gives Mm. back to the Lee, Lee, Lee Steinberg. Steinberg, thank you. So Lee Steinberg gives back, you know, to the urban communities as well. So I would love to connect with Mr. Lee through you guys as all three and be able to utilize that so we can uh, create Pop Warners in diff- in our four districts in Inglewood. Because not mm-hmm. everybody has, you know, a football league in, in those right. districts, you know? Right. And so I have a vision. And so when you invited me there, I was like, okay, God, I'm going to utilize my cousin Sabrina and her husband and you know one day I'll meet Lee and just say like in Inglewood I'm mayor now you know 2023 I have some visions and I'll be reaching out to you and your husband to be a part of my discipleship which is pretty much you know a leadership board that will help me make great decisions for my city not yes. for Raina but for grants. my people yes exactly and get the grants for the kids because yes. the kids- Without activities, the kids have no hope. They cannot just do nothing. I agree. You need STEM programs. Yes. uh, And attach it to the Pop Warner program so that they're getting it regardless. Yes. Football. Yes. But just little initiatives that can help. Our youth. youth. 
Yeah, yes. because we're, they're taking care of us later. So we got to take care of them now. Yeah, because there are future presidents, our future mayors, our future council members, our future engineers, our future nurses, lawyers, you know, business owners. So we have to definitely, you know, speak life into our youth and give them the resources they need to be successful. So Sabrina, thank you so much for blessing my show. Hey everyone, this is Raina Creel signing out with Sabrina. Until then, I'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs> Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.